Known as the legend in the fedora, he roamed the sidelines terrorizing opposing teams with new innovations that brought along unprecedented success to a franchise that would become one of the NFL's most iconic teams. Super Bowl champion, Hall of Fame member, innovator of the game, and origin point of some of the league's most identifiable legends. Our episode today, of course, focuses on the man himself, Tom Landry. Landry entered the world of professional football as a player in 1948. He was drafted in two separate drafts, in the 19th round of the All-American Football Conference's 1948 draft by the New York Yankees, and in the 20th round of the 1947 NFL draft by the New York Giants. He played one year on the Yankees before the AAFC folded, and then he went on to play for the Giants in the NFL. He played for the Giants for several years, including being an All-Pro selection in the 1954 season. During that season, he acted as a player assistant coach. Following his playing career, he stayed as a defensive coordinator on the Giants, where he revolutionized defensive concepts with his invention of the 4-3 defense. Landry essentially created the middle linebacker position by deciding to have the defensive player who traditionally played right over the top of the center to take several steps back and play standing up instead. This new 4-3 look, which included four defensive linemen and three linebackers, proved to be very successful in stopping the run-heavy offenses of the time. His genius parlayed him into a head coaching job with the newest team in the NFL, that newly created team, the Dallas Cowboys. His start on the Cowboys got off to a less than ideal start. The inaugural season in 1960 led to a total record of 0 wins, 11 losses, and 1 tie. They continued to struggle as this new team continued to mold itself into Landry's vision. The team was at or below the 500 mark for its first five years of existence. But considering what was about to follow, the early pain was definitely worth it. From 1966 to 1985, the team never had a losing season. Landry had led the Cowboys to 20 straight winning seasons, which included five Super Bowl appearances, two of those being Super Bowl victories in 1971 and then in 1977. The ending of his Cowboys tenure, and ultimately his coaching career, came in 1988, following a total collapse to a 3-13 season. That year, the Dallas Cowboys had gotten a new owner, the name Jerry Jones. One day after taking control of the team, Jerry Jones would fire Tom Landry. The general manager at the time, Tex Schramm, who had worked with Landry for 29 years, was in tears as he announced the release of Tom Landry. Schramm himself would be let go not long after. The fan outpour was tremendous as they reminisced on the dominance of Landry's tenure. Fans were largely angry with the way that Jerry Jones had treated Landry with such disrespect. Reportedly, Jones hadn't even discussed with Landry before his decision to let him go. Two days after that announcement, Landry met with his players to say goodbye with tears in his eyes and the players stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Landry had taken this Cowboys team from literally nothing to multiple time Super Bowl champions through his vision and innovation for the game of football. Landry is credited with not only being the father of the 4-3 defense, but also with pioneering situational substitutions and reworking the shotgun offense. And to carry on his legacy, Tom Landry had an abundance of assistant coaches who would go on to become head coaches themselves. Let's take a look at Tom Landry's extended coaching tree. The first coach on this list will probably have their own episode one day on this channel. He is the one and only Mike Ditka. Ditka was a special teams and receivers coach from 1973 to 1981 underneath Tom Landry, before getting the job as head coach of the Chicago Bears in 1982. He would hold that position for 11 years until the 1992 season. During that time, he won one Super Bowl in 1985, featuring a 15-1 season and one of, if not the best, defensive performances of all time. The 85 Bears defense was first in every major category, including yards allowed, points allowed, and takeaways, which allowed them to cruise their path to a Super Bowl victory. Following his legendary run as Bears coach, 
Ditka retired. But that only lasted five years, because in 1997 he jumped back into things and took over as head coach at the Saints. He held that position for three years, and never had a winning record while he was there. His most notable achievement from his Saints tenure was the infamous Ricky Williams trade. Mike Ditka traded every single one of the Saints 1999 draft picks, and if that wasn't enough, he also threw in the first round pick from the 2000 season in order to move up and pick the running back, Ricky Williams. With the value that's put on running backs nowadays, could you imagine if somebody pulled that off today? <laughs> Absolute insanity. The season following that trade, the team went 3-13 and Ditka was fired. Although the ending of his career was unspectacular to say the least, nothing can take away his great run he had with the Bears. Didka finished with a total record of 121 wins and 95 losses, and he had several assistants go on to become head coaches. Those names include Jack Del Rio, Dave McGinnis, Buddy Ryan, and Vince Tobin. After over a decade as a college coach, our next head coach, John Makovic, was given his first NFL coaching job in 1981 as the quarterback's coach on Landry's Cowboys. He held that position for two years before the Chiefs made him their head coach from 1983 to 1986. With the Chiefs, Makovic went 30-34 and in his career, with his best year ironically coming in his last, where he went 10-6 and and went 1-done and in the playoffs. Following this stint, he returned to the collegiate head coaching ranks for another 13 years. The sole branch extending from Makovic's coaching tree goes to Richard Williamson. Our next coach was with Tom Landry from the very beginning. Dick Nolan was hired as the Cowboys defensive backs coach in 1962, and later being promoted to defensive coordinator in 1966. The 49ers would make him their head coach in the 1968 season, which he held until 1975. Following a few other stints, including as head coach of the Saints between 1977 and 1980, Nolan returned to be Landry's receivers and defensive backs coach on the Cowboys from 1982 until 1990. Nolan finished his professional head coaching career with a record of 69-82-5. His lone extension to the coaching tree is Paul Wiggin, who served as defensive line and eventual defensive coordinator on his 49ers from 1968 to 1974. Dan Reeves is our next coach on the list, and he began his impressive NFL coaching career as an offensive backfield coach, and later, offensive coordinator for Tom Landry between 1975 and 1980, before starting a 23-year career as head coach of the Broncos, Giants, and Falcons. He finished with a total career record of 190 wins, 165 losses, and two ties. Despite making four Super Bowl appearances as a head coach, he never was able to win the big game. His most successful year came in Atlanta in 1998, following a 14-2 campaign, in which he would reach the Super Bowl nearly 10 years after his last Super Bowl appearance. However, the results were still the same, and his team would lose to a repeat Super Bowl Broncos 34-19. Although he never achieved a Super Bowl victory in his 23-year run as head coach, he did have several of his assistants go on to become head coaches themselves and further that legacy of his. Those names included Chan Gailey, Mike Nolan, and Mike Shanahan. Shanahan, great in his own right, continues to grow the coaching tree with names like Gary Kubiak, Sean McVay, Kyle Shanahan, and Matt LaFleur. Following a long college coaching career, our last coach on the list is Gene Stallings, who was hired by Tom Landry to be a defensive backs coach on the Cowboys from 1972 all the way to 1985. In the 1986 season, Stallings was finally given a shot, and he was hired as head coach of the St. Louis Cardinals. Two years into his stint with the Cardinals, that team relocated to Phoenix, Arizona. He would be the coach of the Phoenix Cardinals for an additional two years. He finished with a 23-34-1 record, and he never had a season get over 7 wins. Following his time in the NFL, Stallings would return to the college ranks, where he would coach at Alabama for 7 seasons. He would have no additional coaches branch off from him in his coaching tree while in the NFL. And that wraps up the impressive coaching tree of Tom Landry. 
Landry stands as a true legend of the game, not only winning multiple championships himself, known for bringing an expansion team from absolutely nothing to the very peak in a very short amount of time, but also for his large contributions to the innovation of the game of professional football. But if all of that wasn't enough to further bolster his legacy as one of the most iconic coaches in history, he also left his mark by hiring a great staff that would branch out and formed a very respectable coaching tree that would feature their own Super Bowl victories and Hall of Fame careers, all of which continues to push Landry's concepts and styles for years to follow, further implanting his impact on the game. Thank you all so much for watching. I say this in every video and I mean it in every video. I truly do appreciate you watching. I invite you all to leave a comment below with your thoughts, opinions on the subject, facts that I may have left out, or suggestions for future video uploads. So subscribe to stay notified of when I do upload and share this video and help this channel continue to grow. All information that I used and gathered for this video comes from ProFootballReference.com, Britannica Encyclopedia, the New York Times, and the NFL Hall of Fame website. Again, I appreciate it and see you all in the next one.